that's the moment of satisfaction. It's nice. Yeah. The journey of happiness is the time post-operative when you see her in clinic, mm -hmm. the relief she feels when there's no longer a large tumor that's, that smells bad, that bleeds, that is now removed. The skin is intact. She doesn't have any pain anymore. Chào đón các bạn đang đến với Nhật ký bác sĩ nơi sẽ kết nối câu chuyện y đức từ tâm của các bác sĩ đầu ngành tại Vinmec. Và các bạn không chỉ được lắng nghe và cập nhật những thông tin và kiến thức quan trọng về y khoa mà còn được lắng nghe những câu chuyện đầy cảm hứng từ hành trình nghề nghiệp của các bác sĩ của chúng ta. Viewers, welcome back to another episode of Doctor's Diary. And for the second episode, we are so thrilled to have you back mm -hmm. to the show with us, Dr. Mekeon Hartman. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Last time we, uh, we talked a lot about your journey to Vietnam, why you care about breast cancer, mm -hmm. and also the importance of early detection. But in this episode, we, I mean me and all the viewers, <laughs> so curious about your personal side, your work, some of the uh, most memorable patient stories and how the experience have shaped you into uh, the career path that you're taking care of right now. Thank you for having me. Uh, can you tell us about the experience that was particularly difficult for you as a doctor? Right, so I mean, we, we see patients all the time. Uh, some are not so memorable, they're more ordinary, and some are more complicated. Um, so I, this is a patient I hadn't been in Singapore for very long. My Mandarin is a bit broken, so I need someone But to... But you can, still can speak Mandarin. <laughs> nah, not so much. A little okay. bit. Um, so this is a lady who had a very large tumor. How old was she? She was about 45 five years old. She was a mother of two, mm -hmm. uh, worked as a teacher. Uh, but for some reason, she had taken a long time before she came to the hospital. So with large tumors, we start with chemotherapy to make them smaller. But in her a little bit rare case, the tumor grew despite chemotherapy, which happens in about 5% of the time. Now, uh, When the tumor is large, it can grow outwards. Sometimes it grows inwards. So hers grew inwards. So it had attached to the underlying muscles. And not only that, also to the rib structures. Um, so the, the surgery now is complicated. Um, we need to resect her chest wall. So basically take out a number of her ribs, reconstruct the chest wall, remove the breast, and then cover the area with Um, tissue from elsewhere. Oh. So for understandable reasons, she was quite reluctant to undergo surgery, but she had spread of the disease nowhere else. So we had an opportunity to cure uh, if we resected the tumor. So after multiple counseling sessions, she finally agreed to have surgery. So it was by myself, a thoracic surgeon to remove the ribs, a plastic surgeon to reconstruct. But it, this was a time when she's Um, sort of right before surgery, she said, Dr. Michael, are you sure that I need 45 drains? I said, 45 drains? What do you mean? No. So I said, you need four, two, five drains. Then she was finally okay. She said, okay, if it's not 45 drains, it's just four to five drains, I'm happy. And mm -hmm. then we did the surgery and she's done well afterwards. But, But very hard, very complicated on the treatment, on the consultancy, right? Yes. It was about 10, 10 consultancies before we finally proceeded with surgery. Mm -hmm. And the process to, to persuade her, for me, is very hard because each patient is different story, different yeah. mindset. Yes, I, I'm, I don't view it necessarily as a persuasion. Uh, we, we are there to be there for them, there for them and for them to make their own choice. Mm -hmm. But I want them to make their own choice based on not fear, not lack of information, not on prejudice, but basically once they've seen all the evidence and their opportunities and choices that they make one which is sensible for them. Mm -hmm. So that takes time, depending on your educational level, how worried you are, etc. Sometimes it's quick, sometimes it takes longer time. Mm -hmm. 
So the, it's not necessarily persuasion, but just a process of education. Yeah, the process yeah. of education. But um, do you remember why she decided to go to uh, the hospital for a checkup? I think it was ultimately uh, her daughter that uh, made her go. Uh, mm. Yeah. So the daughter noticed the tumor and she asked the mom to come. And it took, I think, four to five months before she finally went to the hospital. So, okay, that yeah. must have been a very um, tough story. But though tough story reminding us how dangerous the breast cancer is, especially mm. when we cannot detect it early. So, um, uh, but I'm sure you have some moment of joy, of happiness as well yeah. during the, the journey of practicing this, right? The, I think the journey of happiness is the time post-operative when you see her in clinic, mm -hmm. the relief she feels when there's no longer a large tumor that's, that smells bad, that bleeds, that is now removed, the skin is intact. She doesn't have any pain anymore. Mm -hmm. That's the moment of satisfaction. It's nice. Yeah. And she was so happy that she made a right decision, yeah. right? If she could make that decision, what might happen? Uh, she would have passed away due to the uh, due to the condition. So alive or dead, yeah. a big gap. So uh, is there any uplifting story that you want to share to inspire other people for early detection or care about more about breast cancer or your health? Yeah. So. I think there are many, but it, I think it has to do with our ability to save breasts. So many women, they envision that if they get breast cancer, they're going to lose the breast, mm -hmm. get a cosmetic deformity where one breast is gone mm -hmm. and a lot of their identity is lost. So many times we can demonstrate to them that even if they have breast cancer, we're able to save the breast, do surgery, and hide the scar in a manner that it doesn't it's not very visible mm -hmm. and the breast is still there so there are many of these stories so we do that using more advanced surgical techniques and sometimes using medical oncology to give chemotherapy to shrink the tumor mm -hmm. where it's in the beginning not conservable and by giving chemotherapy and making it smaller we can now save the breast mm -hmm. and that that story of joy where the woman realizes that there's no cosmetic deformity it's a small procedure that's nice let's talk more about the moment of happiness mm. i want to listen to case with happy ending at the end yeah. with the supportive form from the patient to the consultancy or the treatment yeah yeah so i think it would be typically women who either are very reluctant to get treatment so I had an old uh, auntie. She was 90 years old. 90 years old? She had breast cancer. I said, you need surgery. I said, no, I'm too old. I said, no, nah, I'm not really too old. Uh, I can do a surgery for you quickly. Is that early detection as well? Yeah, reasonably. It was not a big tumor, but two centimeter in size. Mm -hmm. So she, she didn't want. Yeah. So then I gave her an anti-hormone treatment, which is an option for patients who don't want surgery. Mm -hmm. So one month went by, three months, six months, nine months, a year. She still didn't want surgery. Initially, the tumor got smaller and then it started to get a little bit bigger. Again, no. Uh, yeah. Oh. But then I said, you know, trust me. And uh, finally, she trusted me. She had surgery. And with a smile on her face, she went home and she was happy. So it took you one year? It took me one year. Okay, just like deliver on the consultancy. Yes. And uh, that's the, uh, the oldest patient that you had? No. Oh, <laughs> how old was the oldest one? Well, they've, they've been older to about 90, 95. How mm. about the youngest one? The youngest with breast cancer uh, has been 19, which is very, very rare. Oh, tell me more about that case. Now, so these cases are very rare. They tend to carry genetic mutations. So mm. this lady was diagnosed with a, a tumor, uh, which quickly grew, but uh, we managed to diagnose her, treat her, mm -hmm. uh, and then subsequently, uh, you know, do well. She didn't have any children at the time, and the chemotherapy that she needed was likely to affect her future fertility. So what we do then is that we save eggs. So we stimulate her ovaries, mm -hmm. save eggs, 
put them in the freezer. Okay. Uh, then we treat her, and at a later point in time, when the treatment is done, if she wants to become a mom, she's she can. Oh, another yeah. meaningful story. Yeah, this is nice. Our ability to cure breast cancer has gotten so much better mm -hmm. that for early breast cancer, our cure rates are above ninety percent, mm -hmm. maybe as high as ninety-five percent if it's very early. Mm. So our ability to do good and uh, have women live a long and happy life is, is substantial and that, that's meaningful. Mm -hmm. So is it clear that many variety types of experiences have shaped you into the breast cancer doctor? Mm -hmm. And how do you keep yourself grounded and motivated in a field that can be emotionally taxing? We as individuals, we work in different ways. I think. In order for me to stay grounded and motivated, it's about having a meaningful family, being uh, physically active. So mm -hmm. I stay very physically active and mm -hmm. that makes my life meaningful and I have enough energy to do what I'm supposed to do at work. Strong body, make a strong mind, yeah, yeah. And make a strong it, it, uh, motivation as well. It helps. Uh, is there any message that you want to share with us, the listener, the viewer, particularly women who may be scared or hesitant to do early checkup. Yeah, I, th I think the message here is to trust the doctor enough to have a meaningful conversation. Trust the doctor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speak to doctor eventually, give yourself the necessary time to get enough information to make an educated choice. Mm -hmm. Even if you're scared, bring a family member, bring a friend. Eventually, you'll come to a realization that you can make a good choice. Mm -hmm. And your experience, both uh, the difficult one and the inspiring, really show us the meaning to fight breast cancer. Thank you so much. And I do hope to see you in the next episode. <laughs> Happy to be here. And to the viewers out there, if you have any question to ask Dr. Hartman, don't hesitate to comment below. And we try to make the connection as soon as possible. And goodbye for now.